Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of A New Way to Museum. I am Alicia and today we are going to be feeding our non-venomous snakes. So you've probably seen our video of our rattlesnake eating. Today we are going to feed our non-venomous snakes. So we have about 20 species of non-venomous snakes and most of them are you can find in the Great Plains area so that's kind of our theme for our discovery room up here. We do have a few that aren't from around here, but they're super cute, so we keep them anyways. So the difference between feeding our venomous snakes and our non-venomous snakes is our non-venomous ones do not eat live food, unless they're eating insects, like a few of them, but most of them are getting dead frozen mice that are thawed. So we do this because it's safer for our snakes in case they're actually not hungry, the mice doesn't hurt them. Um, as well as it's really good for programs and stuff like that. Kids love to watch snakes eat. And so all of our snakes are pretty much on a schedule. Of course, you know, winter time comes around and they're not eating as much. So right now they're eating about every other week and some of them are still eating every week. So we will meet some of them because you will see how hungry they are. So to start off, we are going to start with our North American racer. So when we are feeding snakes, we always use tongs because we don't want the snakes to think that hand means food. So we get our snakes out all the time. We use them for programs and stuff like that. So it's important that we have that differentiation for them. So our North American racer, he does not have a name. We just call him Crazy Snake. As you can see, he is a very good eater. So he is one of those snakes that eats every week. He is always super excited for feeding day. He knows when it's coming. Um, and even when he's not eating, he is obviously still crazy. They're super fast. Um, out in the wild, when you run into these snakes, they can come into a variety of colors. They can be green or blue or black. And they're called yellow-bellied racers as well because they have this beautiful yellow belly. So we got him as a juvenile. And when we got him, he actually had an injured tail. So he has part of his tail missing. So that's why he's really special to us because he was injured and we were able to make sure it healed properly. And now we still have him. And he's just a hoot for kids to watch because he's so active all the time. So the next snake we are going to feed is our long-nosed snake. So our long-nosed snake, we have had him since well before I was here. He's pretty old. Um, long-nosed snakes are pretty cool. They obviously kind of resemble coral snakes, so that really helps them in the wild. You know, you could fear that it's venomous and whatnot. So today he is eating really well. Um, he's always a hit or miss. He always eats every week, but sometimes I think he can't see very well because he will strike at the mouse and miss and strike at the mouse and miss. And it takes a couple times for him to get it, but today he did really good. Um, obviously he's enjoying this. So the next snake we are going to feed is actually two snakes. So first of all, some of our snakes do have other snake roommates. So when we have this, we always make sure to watch them for the extended period of that they are eating so that we make sure both of them are eating. Because sometimes one snake will be super hungry and try to steal from the other snake. And if ever that is the case, then we always remove the snake that did eat, put them in a little holding um, cage for a while, and allow the other one the time to eat. So these are our Plains hognose snakes. So they are actually ambassadors. So the light colored one is pork and the dark colored one is beans. So I love these two snakes and come when it comes to feed them because pork is just the sweetest eater. She has just this teeny little bite. She's never aggressive. Um, she just slowly opens her mouth and gets the mouse. Whereas with beans, he's just quite hilarious. Sometimes he'll hiss at the mouse, strike at it a couple times, look me up and down, see if I'm for real. Sometimes he will not take it from the tongs. Sometimes I have to set it in front of him and watch him eat it and make sure he's not stealing from pork or pork's not stealing from him. But he's just always very entertaining. When it comes to not feeding time, they're both absolute sweethearts. That's why they're ambassadors and everything like that. Hognose snakes are 
rear fanged snakes. So out in the wild, they'd be eating stuff like frogs and toads. In captivity, they are eating mice, which they don't really have any problem with because they are actually captive snakes. Um, one was found in the wild, the other one was somebody's pet and then donated to us. The next snake we are going to feed has been a pet its whole life. It is a coach whip. So this coach whip right here, her name is Whipped Cream. She was named by one of our volunteers. It was a nine-year-old girl, so you can think it's a pretty interesting name. So coach whips in general are just kind of crazy snakes. They're not constrictors, so they don't really coil around stuff when they're scared or anything like that. They're just pretty much always straight and jerky and everything like that. They're still really sweet snakes and everything like that, but whipped cream here is pretty entertaining eater. She is, uh, as you can see, she's not going to eat the mouse properly, so she's giving us a good opportunity to talk about how you're supposed to eat a mouse. So when snakes are eating mice, they're supposed to swallow them head first, and that's because it's going to go down easier. So snakes have teeth but they cannot chew up their food so they do have to swallow it whole so they have these little curved teeth and this unfused jaw so they can open their mouth really wide um, they cannot unhinge it like a bunch of people think but they can open it pretty wide and with these teeth they actually just use them to grab onto the prey and pull them back in kind of a walk back motion but as you can see whipped cream here is not eating it head first. And so the problem with this is that that tail and those back legs can kind of get in the way of swallowing it. So a lot of snakes, if they don't get it head first when they're trying, they will put the mouse down and try again. Whereas whipped cream here is just going for it. And as you can see, she's doing great with it. So I think she will be fine. It is a smaller mouse compared to her body size. She is a pretty big snake. So I think she will do great. So the next snake we are going to talk about is our Great Plains rat snake, Callie. She is a juvenile. She is only three years old. Um, she has been with us since she was a hatchling and she was found and brought to us. So as you can see, she's just hanging out in this paper towel roll. So a couple weeks back, we had a Christmas program here where we had our um, kids make little gifts for our snakes. So this paper towel roll right here, a lot of the snakes have them. They're really good for climbing on, hiding in, and everything like that. And Callie, of all the snakes, absolutely loves hers. She does not come out, and she does not even come out to eat. As you can see, she's just going to take the mouse and drag it into the paper towel roll with her, and it's gonna be the end of it. So the next snake we are going to feed is actually a pretty interesting snake. It is a western rat snake, bull snake hybrid. So it is not a wild snake. It was, you know, made in a pet store and it was donated to us. So he is a big snake, obviously. And to me, he gets the worst traits of both western rat snakes and bull snakes. He is sassy, he is strong, but I also call him my garbage disposal because if I ever defrosted a mouse and one of my snakes doesn't eat it, he is always super happy to eat it. And you can see he is super strong and he just loves to eat. He's actually eating two different mice today because our bull snake didn't eat, so he politely asked if he could have two. So when he's not eating, he is, you know, he can be handled and everything like that. He doesn't bite or anything like that. But he has a hard time telling when it's not feeding time and when it's time just to be held. So since he is a hybrid snake and not one that you would find out in the wild, we don't take him to many programs with little kids because then we have to explain how that whole thing works. But he is a very good display snake because he is so big, he is so active, and he likes to climb trees. The last snake we are going to feed is our Graham's crayfish snake. So this snake, when we first got it in captivity, 
did not want to eat mice, which happens sometimes, especially when you're bringing in snakes that aren't used to eating mice as their main diet. And obviously he's a Graham's crayfish snake, so he prefers crayfish. But it didn't take him too long to figure out how to eat mice, and now he's a great eater for us. Um, he is the only snake that tends to get insulted by you trying to feed him with tongs. He prefers you feed him with your hands, and since he is such a small, harmless snake, it's totally fine. Um, I have been bit by him before, but it doesn't hurt. Like I said, their teeth are so super small, and once he does bite me, he lets go immediately, and then kind of has to take a moment to reg regain himself and say, okay, I want food, not your fingers, okay? So he's a very sweet snake. We do not know how old he is since he is wild. Um, he can often be found just swimming in his water bowl and everything like that. But he does love hiding under this rock. So we're lucky we can see him eat though. Alright guys, thank you so much for joining us today and watching our video. Um, not all of our snakes ate for us today, so hopefully in the future we can get videos of the other snakes eating and you guys can check that out. So, have a great day. Thanks for joining us in the New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.